welcome you to East Castle Place's weekly ecumenical worship service. I'm Chaplain Harold Epley, and uh, we are here on Thursday at 2 o'clock. And remind you that if you wish to come and be a part of the services, we continue to meet on Thursdays at 2. Otherwise, you are probably watching this on Channel 955 on uh, Sunday afternoon at 2. And uh, today, we are observing the second Sunday in the season of Advent. And uh, Advent is, of course, the four weeks that lead up to our celebration of Christmas, a time of preparation and getting ready. Those are, are the themes that we hear today. And always during Advent, we hear some stories about John the Baptist, who was called the forerunner, the one who came before Jesus uh, to prepare the way. And today we'll hear a story about John, uh, and in this story he is in prison. He has been imprisoned because of his criticizing King Herod, and um, if you know the story of John, he eventually is beheaded and uh, put to death, obviously, uh, for challenging the authority of the king. And uh, John was that kind of person. He was outspoken. Uh, his theme was repent prepare the way, and of course the one he was preparing the way for was Jesus. But today we have an interesting story, and I will reflect on this in my sermon, about John wondering if Jesus is indeed the Messiah. So we begin our worship now. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you once called John the Baptist to give witness to the coming of your Son and to prepare his way. Grant us, your people, the wisdom to see your purpose today and the openness to hear your will, that we may be witnesses to Christ's coming and so prepare his way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 35th chapter, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands, and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of the jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Here ends our first reading. The second reading is from the letter of James, the fifth chapter, verses 7 through 10. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it 
until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Here ends the second reading. And our gospel for today is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. When John the Baptist heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has risen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the gospel of our Lord. We don't always get what we expect. When I was a child, the weeks before Christmas were always a time of great anticipation, because I knew that somewhere in the house, gifts already wrapped sat waiting to be discovered. And it didn't help that I lived with a sister who always found the gifts before I did and then offered to tell me where they were for a price. My sister was one of those children who interpreted the passage, Seek, and ye will find, quite literally. She always found the right closet where all the gifts lay hiding. And then she tore open the wrapping paper just a bit, enough to find out what lay inside, but not to be detected by my parents. I remember most clearly the Christmas when I was eight years old and eagerly awaiting a brand new Hot Wheels racing car set. I know what you got, my sister bragged, and for 50 cents, I'll tell you, now, as an older brother, I didn't take well to bribery, but it was Christmas and 50 cents didn't seem like too much of a price to pay. Is it a racing car set? I asked. Yes, replied my sister, and my curiosity was satisfied. Now all I had to do was wait and then somehow act surprised when I finally opened my gift. Christmas finally came, and as I opened the package, I raised my eyebrows just the way I had been practicing. Oh, a racing car set, I shouted, overacting just a bit. But then I looked down at the gift in my hands, and my mouth fell open with dismay. It's a Johnny Lightning racing car set, I groaned. I couldn't believe it. I had specifically asked for Hot Wheels, 
but my misguided parents had picked out the cheaper car set, the one without all the fancy accessories I had been hoping for. And suddenly I was one disappointed child. I suppose many children would be happy with the Johnny Lightning set, but you see I had my heart set on one thing, and I received another. We don't always get what we expect. After reading today's Gospel lesson, I wonder if John the Baptist was somebody who expected one thing and received another. In today's lesson, John is in prison, awaiting his death. King Herod has imprisoned John for speaking out after the king divorced his wife and married his sister-in-law. Now perhaps John's imprisonment has caused him to have some doubts, or maybe he just wants to be sure, but for some reason, John sends his disciples to ask if Jesus is truly the Promised One, the Messiah who has come to save the world. But when you put it in context, John's question seems rather strange, especially when we recall that it was John who baptized Jesus a few years earlier in the River Jordan. John had watched as the heavens opened up at Jesus' baptism, and the Spirit of God descended like a dove, and a voice from heaven proclaimed, This is my beloved Son. And it was John who claimed that Jesus was the one who would baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Surely John must have known that Jesus was the Messiah, the promised one the world had been waiting for. But now, from prison, John sends this question. Is he having his doubts? John said that the Messiah, the one who would come after him, would be much mightier than himself. Now, what's going on in John's mind? Does it seem that John expected a different kind of Messiah than the one Jesus actually is? John said that that Messiah would be mightier than himself, one who would clear the threshing floor and burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. I like to compare John to those fire and brimstone preachers that we sometimes see on TV, the ones who speak of hell and everlasting damnation and tell us we better get our acts together if we want to be saved. And when people ask John what the Messiah would be like, that's the kind of person he described. But Jesus is no such person. In response to John's question, Jesus instructs the disciples, Go and tell John what you see and hear. The blind receive their sight. The lepers are cleansed. The poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. No hellfire and damnation there. No mention of judgment. No mention of the chaff burning in the unquenchable fire that John had mentioned. Rather, Jesus preaches a message of mercy. And he spends his days healing and forgiving. Jesus' response to John is actually a quote from the prophet Isaiah. Jesus quotes these words to show that he is indeed the Messiah, but also to show that the Messiah is not the stern judge that John expects him to be. Well, how can somebody as holy as John the Baptist have his doubts about Jesus? 
And why those strange words from Jesus? Blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. Could John have possibly been offended by Jesus? I think so. Just as I think all of us, at one time or another, are offended by God. God who doesn't do things quite the way we think they should be done. After all, God's ways are not our ways. And we don't always get what we expect, especially when it comes from God. If John made one mistake, it was this. He expected the Messiah to be just like himself. And it's the same mistake we sometimes make ourselves. But the truth is that Jesus came as the Messiah in a way that nobody expected. Born into a simple family, raised in the town of Nazareth where they said nothing good comes from, growing up to heal the sick, forgive the sinners, preach the gospel of salvation for all people? That's not what John expected. It's not even what Jesus' disciples expected. Now, we may be tempted to judge John for doubting when Jesus did not live up to John's expectations. But John, as great a man as he was, was human. And it's part of being human to anticipate, to expect things to happen a certain way. Each of us has our own expectations, and each of us is disappointed when what we expect doesn't come about. And when we're disappointed, it doesn't matter how good the things we receive actually are. We start to overlook them. Remember that Johnny Lightning set? In the end, it was a fine gift, and I enjoyed it as much as any Hot Wheels set. But on that Christmas day, I couldn't appreciate it because it wasn't what I expected. And so I wonder, Christians, I wonder how many gifts have passed us by unappreciated because they weren't what we expected. And I wonder how many times God's love has gone unnoticed without even a word of thanks because it did not come to us in the way we expected. During this Advent season, let us open our eyes and put aside our blind expectations so that we may truly see all the gifts God is giving us right now and receive them with joy. God, who sometimes doesn't do things the way we expect, but who certainly always gives us exactly what we need. Amen. We continue now with the intercessory prayers. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus, you've traveled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. And at your command, the sick were made well. We pray that you will come to the aid of our world now in the midst of the continuing spread of COVID-19. We pray that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from our fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Lord Jesus, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with those who have died from this virus, we pray especially for Don Sturmer, that he and all who have passed may be at rest with you in your eternal peace and joy. Be with families of those who are sick or who have died. We pray especially for Arlene and her family. As they worry or grieve, defend them from illness and despair. 
May they know your peace. Be with the doctors, the nurses, the researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and to help those who are affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and your peace. Be with the leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. And whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by people suffering from this illness, or none at all, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will stay with us as we endure and mourn, persist and prepare. And in place of our anxiety, we pray that you would heal us and give us your peace. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. And we pray in the words Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. If you're watching on channel 955, we will now conclude the service with the favorite Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And I thank you for being here, tuning in this week, and I uh, wish you continued blessings throughout this Advent season as we continue our preparations for Christmas and we continue to pray for our world. Amen.